Hey everybody, this is Brett Haddock, TN Artist. Welcome to my channel. Uh, today's painting is the overview of the full lesson that I have for my patrons over on Patreon. If you're not a patron, I invite you to come over and join us all. There's hours of lessons over there, and uh, it's only $3 a month, so it's not bad. Anyway, so today I wanted to talk about, you know, how do you paint to get a glow, to get that light and dark kind of feel? For if you're doing something like this, this painting is called By Candlelight. And the main thing with it, when you're thinking about doing any kind of you know, lighting source, be it a candle, a campfire, the sun, whatever, uh, the moon, you know, anything that you want to appear really bright, you need to have some contrast to it. And you need to build it up in layers. And that's kind of what you can see that I'm doing here, is starting off with a really dark background kind of a mid-tone red and then from that mid-tone red I lay in some lighter colors and smudge it and then I select from that smudge to start blending that in and then I add a little bit more lighter color and start blending that in and just kind of keep doing that and what that lets me do is not only walk it across the value scale from light to dark or from dark to light but also I can change my hue so I start adding in a little bit of the yellow because I know my ultimate color that I'm going to go towards is going to be a yellowish white. And so I'm going to have that. And so knowing that also in the background, if you noticed when I was laying in the background, I laid in a bluish tone. So that way I had not only the, the contrast of the light and dark, but I also have the complementary color scale going on so that I have oranges and blues laid against each other, reds and and you know a little bit of greens in there and stuff as well and so laying that in to get that that really kind of makes everything pop off of the canvas for what i'm doing so what i did here in art rage is i just do it the same way i do when i'm painting a, a, a traditional painting is just start with my darks masking off my areas i want to work on next and then from there uh, just kind of painting in my mid-tones and start laying in my lighter tones and my darker tones and getting it to where I want it to be. And the nice thing about doing it digitally like this in Art Rage, you know, Art Rage, if you don't have it already, uh, there's a link to it in the bottom that you can get. It is going to take you over to an affiliate link, but uh, you can definitely take a look at it and see they have a great uh, trial where you can try everything in it. You just can't save or print. But the nice thing about it is, is that if you are somebody who has painted traditionally, it's really intuitive to keep painting in a traditional manner and building up your stuff. Now, the nice thing about it is, is that later on, you can kind of take advantage of the digital aspect, aspect of it and lay in glazes of light and glazes of shadow and really kind of play around with it. You can also zoom in a lot more, like I did here, than you could on a traditional painting, except maybe with the magnifying glass. But anyway, so the main thing to consider here when you're trying to, again, make that glowing highlight and that glowing uh, feel to something is, again, get those darks laid in and then lay that light across it so that you really have that playing against one another. Because without the shadows, you can't have the light there. It just doesn't happen. It would all look flat. And really what you want to do with that is lay in your midtones first so that way you can go lighter and darker uh, because if you look here with all of these all of these if you sampled them on the value scale they're pretty close to the middle so that's what i mean by mid-tones is being able to have them there and then push them a little bit darker push them a little bit brighter with it now if you're using digital like i am here one of the things you can do is lay in your mid-tones lay in some of your shadows get kind of the main shapes of volume and then you can create a layer that is a multiply layer and a layer that is an overlay layer and use that to go back into the multiply layer and start adding in more shadows that really kind of helps pull everything together. And you can lay on the overlay layer, you can lay in um, highlights and start making things really pop. You can also use color dodge to make the colors uh, really pop out as well. So, you know, something to think about with that uh, that you can really take advantage of using the digital. Now there are a few other tricks that I put in here as well for how to play around with multiply layers and get some nice blending. 
that uh, gives you that glaze kind of feel and that hand painted look because that's the main thing with it. I mean, I like doing some photo manipulation here and there and playing around with stuff, but I really like that hand painted look. And so I try to do that mo more than anything else, really, and just getting that feel of it. So, you know, it's not perfect. It's not a, you know, it's not a photo. It's a painting. So for me, that's what I, what I enjoy doing. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, like I said, come join me over on Patreon. It's only $3 a month, and there's hours of content there to really do uh, all the different lessons. Uh, there's also, if you need any of the brushes, I get asked a lot of times, what brushes do I use? Primarily, I'm using brushes that I made because they save me time. Uh, I even talk about, you know, the possibility of using some of the stencils that you can get uh, along with my brushes over on Gumroad. I have some free ones over there and I have some paid for ones that have lifetime updates. So check there as well. But, you know, if there's questions about the process here, leave it below. Uh, I'll be more than happy to try and answer it. If you want to see the slow version, this is literally sped up about six times of the speed. So it's about an hour long painting. And as I discuss exactly what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So uh, if you do have questions about it, more than happy to still answer them, even if you're not a patron and, you know, be happy to do it. You can also join me over on Facebook. I have a Facebook group that I answer questions like this. Some people post in it their artwork for feedback. Some people post just a post uh, and show their artwork. And it's just a matter of answering three simple questions. And then you're more than welcome to join us. But I, and I hope you will. And I hope you not only become a patron, but that you'll join us on the Facebook page because over there you can share your artwork and get feedback uh, as well. So anyway, um, I guess I'll just let this kind of play out the rest of the way. And I hope you enjoy it and you can see some of the tips and tricks here with it. But, you know, there's a lot of different things you can see that you can do, like with using stencils to kind of clean up shapes, using the pencils and so forth to do that. And just really, it's a great way to have fun and relax because, you know, the great thing about painting digital is that you can always undo something, <laughs> you know, just spend hours repainting it. So, and this one, I, oh, speaking of which, in this one, I, I used a lot of layers, but I did that mainly to try and help uh, my patrons because a lot of them are newer for painting. And so just understanding how to lay out your layers, how to use them so that you can get the best out of it and how to do proper layer management. Most of the time, if I was painting this, I'd probably be painting on like maybe three layers. So, um, except for maybe in the final where I might put an overlay or a multiply layer on top of those. But anyway, so this is kind of, you know, just it going through the adding in the rest of the stuff and trying to put in some of the highlights and some of the details here and there to make it a little bit more interesting. But I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you uh, will leave any questions or comments below, like I said before, and that you'll come join us on uh, Patreon. Have a fantastic day. Happy New Year, by the way. It is New Year's at the publishing of this. It is uh, the 2nd of January, so we're just into 2022. But um, I hope that, uh, you know, if you've got a New Year's resolution to try and do more artwork, that you'll let me participate with you. You know, join me on Facebook and share what you're doing. I love seeing what everybody else is doing, not just uh, having my own stuff there. So anyway, have a fantastic day. Have a fantastic New Year, and I hope to talk to you soon. Enjoy the rest of this.